All right. Look at your neighbor and tell him, get ready, get ready, get ready for a Palm Sunday message like you've never heard. Woo. Have I done all my stuff that I'm supposed to do? Can, can, front row, can y'all remind me if I get, forget anything? All right, I'm good. What's today? What does today begin? Passion Week, Holy Week. It begins and it reminds us, it's called Palm Sunday because it reminds us of the, or, or it is the, the recognition of Jesus' what is known as the triumphal entry into Jerusalem. He had gone into Jerusalem hundreds, if not thousands of times in his lifetime, hundreds of times as an adult man, and no telling how many times as the Messiah being revealed and revealing himself for three and a half years, but he had never entered the way he entered that day. Because everything that happened that day and everything that would happen that week, but today we're talking about that specific day, the triumphal entry into Jerusalem is what it has come, become known as, was very, very intentional. It was, it was planned out by Jesus long before that day got there. In fact, it was prophesied that it would happen exactly the way it happened. And the reason it was plotted and planned by Jesus to operate and happen exactly the way it did is because he understood, I have to do it this way because the testimony, this is, this is later on mentioned in the book of Revelation, but it is something you need to live by. The testimony of Jesus is a spirit of prophecy. If you want to prove that Jesus is the Messiah, you have to use prophecy. You can't tell a, uh, a traditional Jewish believer that does not believe that Jesus is the Messiah, that Jesus is the Messiah, and they say, how do you know that he's the Messiah? Well, because my pastor told me he's the Messiah. Or because the Bible says so. No, they want to know what your Bible says to say so. They know the prophecies of the Messiah. And in and, and the way many, many Messianic Jews have been won to Yeshua as their Messiah is through prophecy. No human being could ever fulfill all the prophecies that Jesus fulfilled in his lifetime and in one week. Many in one day. No one had ever done it before and no one has ever done it since. Next Sunday is what? Resurrection or Easter. You're not going to go to hell if you call it Easter, but it is Resurrection Sunday. It's Easter's what's known as in this world. Yes, it has pagan origins. Yes, Easter is all, I know all that. But it is called, many, many people call it Easter Sunday. But we know what it really is. Unapologetically, we are not afraid to say it. It is Resurrection Sunday. It is the Sunday that we remember that the stone was rolled away and Jesus came out of that tomb. We are not ashamed to talk about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But that's not today. Today is Palm Sunday. Now I believe, and this is what I was talking about earlier, that my words that I'm about to say for some of you will be sort of like, well, that's just pastor. That's the way he always is. Everything's the greatest thing that's ever existed. I, my pastor told me that one time. Pastor Frank, he said, I'll tell you one thing about you. Every sermon you've ever preached is the greatest sermon you've ever preached in your life. It's the greatest series that's ever happened. Your church is healthier and greater than it's ever been. She said, every time I ask you about anything, it's the greatest it's ever been in the history of your ministry. And, and he goes, you know what? I truly believe you believe that. It's because I do. I'm an optimist. I'm not a pessimist. I truly do believe this, what I'm about to say. But it may sound a little pessimistic when I say it this way. I believe this Resurrection Easter week 
is probably the most critical one as a believer alive in this room and watching online you have ever had it happen in your life. Ever. Because I sense in my spirit what is coming after will be an assault on the gospel like we never thought would ever happen in the United States of America. The gospel of Jesus Christ is already under assault, but it's about to go to another level. And I believe that if we go through this resurrection week, if we go through this week and don't really take it the way we should take it, we will not have within us and on us what we must have on us and in us to be able to handle what is coming. The Word of God says the same resurrection power that quickened the body of Jesus shall also quicken your mortal body. Now I believe in the rapture and I believe the dead in Christ shall rise first and that resurrection power will be involved in that. But I got news for you. The resurrection power is not sitting in a box somewhere holding up and waiting to be used for a one-time event. The resurrection power of God is active in this room right now. The resurrection power of God can raise your marriage from the dead. It can raise your kids from the dead. It can raise relationships from the dead. It can raise your finances from the dead. It can raise your health from the dead. He's still raising the dead. So as I was, I already had my message done. I was looking over my message this morning, as I always do in my office right before I come out. And God spoke to me and told me to do something, which usually happens in my office. He said, I want you to go back. I want you to pull your notes up from Palm Sunday and Easter Sunday, 2020. And I want you to remind the church that may have forgotten where we were four years ago this week. So I'll just read my notes. I'll probably preach them a little bit in between. But these are direct copy and paste from my notes. In a room where there was myself and nine other people. They came later. A camera, a sound operator, a reduced praise team, me, and an empty church. You remember? Do you remember? Four years ago. This is what I said. Slap your neighbor in the comment section. And type these words. This is my notes from that day. Palm Sunday, 2020. Everything has changed. I'm just going to read them verbatim. I'm telling you, when this is over, everything will have changed. Some things will be subtle. Some things will be very obvious. But make no mistake about it, everything has changed. This is four years ago in my notes. Banking has changed. Retail has changed. Shopping has changed and will change further. The way you work has forever changed. Business models have forever changed. These are my notes from four years ago. How many knows every one of them things are true? 
Our mindset has changed. Our habits have changed. Our priorities have changed. Our relationships have changed. Our manners have changed. Our community has forever been changed. Church has changed forever too. The church needed to change. We needed a wake-up call. We needed something to happen to make us appreciate what we have taken for granted so long. I'm just preaching my notes word for word from four years ago, Palm Sunday. But make no mistake about it, we will never be the same. This is a good thing. The church has grown asleep. The church has grown weak. The church has grown inwardly focused. How many knows that will preach today? And that was my sermon four years ago. And then the next thing (laughs) sent a chill up my spine when I read these words because I remembered saying them. And I remembered how crazy a world we were living in was. Have y'all forgot how crazy this world was? I mean, people lost their minds. Never in my life would I dream that I would say the next words that were in my notes from Palm Sunday four years ago, but I did. When we reopen the doors to this local church, who would have ever thought that pastors would have to say, there's a day coming that we'll be able to open the doors again. When we reopen the doors of this local church, when this is over, we will have a story to tell our children and our grandchildren. What will our story be? Will it be a story of one when you left your faith out of fear and doubt? Or will it be a story of one when you grew stronger in your faith? You will have a story to tell. Those are my words four years ago, Palm Sunday. And I remember I elaborated further on that and said, one day your grandkids and your kids will open their history books And they will read about the great pandemic of 2020. And the narrative that will be in their books will be the narrative that the world wants in there. And they will crawl up in your lap and they will ask you, tell me about the great pandemic. What happened? Papa, Nana, Daddy, Mama. What did it do to you? Were you afraid? Did you buy in? Did you change? Will you be able, if you're watching online, because I know a lot of my haters like to watch online, and a lot of the people that's left the church and don't think they need the church anymore, for some reason still tune in to see what we're talking about. Will your story be, yeah, That's when I realized I didn't need the church anymore. That's when I realized I didn't need to go to a gathering anymore because I am the church. How do you think that's going to help your baby when they become a teenager? Do you think they're going to have any desire to serve God if all they got to do is just say I'm the church and therefore feel good about themselves because they follow their mom and dad? That's the kind of people that this moment Revealed. What will your story be? So then I was getting ready to preach my sermon. I was going to say, okay, okay, I'm going to read that just to remind them, and then I'm going to get into my message. But then I heard the Holy Spirit inside of me say, no, 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 no. 
Next week's going to be full of a lot of things and presentations of the children and different kinds of things. And you won't have as much time next week. You're still going to preach the resurrection. But but next week is the time where guests are going to come. And, and this place is going to be packed with people that are looking at our church and checking out our church. You need to talk to your people today. And you need to remind your people, not just about four years ago, Palm Sunday. But you need to open up your notes from four years ago. Easter Sunday morning. Easter Sunday morning. Resurrection Sunday morning. 2020. Much shorter copy and paste, but direct quote from my notes. To an empty sanctuary on Easter Sunday morning. Wow. Wow. The first Easter ever that we did not have children on this stage doing their presentation. First resurrection ever with no banners being waved. No special dancers taking us in. First, no community outreach into our community yesterday or this week ever. So many things are missing today that we have come to know in this church and in our whole life. But today, we have nothing to focus on but the real reason for today. Jesus is alive. He has risen from the grave. Hallelujah. And I preached like a wild man that day. The praise team that was here knows what I'm talking about. God said, God, let me preach like there's a thousand people in that church. And I did because a thousand people were watching. But it's not the same. It's not the same. It was a few weeks later, well ahead of my planned time to do it, when the Holy Spirit said, go ahead and say it now. And that's when I made the declaration I don't care who you follow. I don't care who you voted for. I don't care what side of the aisle you own. You need to hear something. If I'm your pastor, you need to hear your pastor. Never again will the government shut this place down. I'm telling you, it will not happen. It will not happen. I said it will not happen. We will not shut the doors of this house. The doors of this house will stay open. Now, I'll go ahead and get out in front of this. What about when it snows one day and I get a text and close the doors? That ain't what I'm talking about. Do you hear me? I want you to think about what was done to the church. I want you to think about what the enemy was really doing. I want you to understand this was never about two weeks to slow the curve. Never. But we didn't know. None of us knew. None of us had any idea what we were dealing with. We had never dealt with anything like this before. It was never about two weeks to slow the curve. This was now when you have the hindsight to look back on. It. And how amazing is it that the statement is hindsight is 2020. 2020 is perfect vision. Huh? So what I'm saying is we, we now have the ability to look back on it. I think we can pro, profoundly say that the timing of this came at a very strategically placed demonic time. The virus started many months before that. I went back and I went to the CDC this morning and they have a, they, they, I couldn't believe it. The CDC website has something called the COVID uh, history, I mean the COVID hall of fame or something like that. Stupid, silly, where you can go and study all things COVID and it's the timeline. It's called history center or something. But it, it, it made it sound like the hall of fame or something, but it was, I can't remember the words. But it shows the timeline. And it starts talking about the timeline mid 
mid-2019, it starts to explode in China. And then it talks about the airlines. It talks about all this. And then it talks about when California issued a shutdown. And then the same week, President Trump came out and said, we're going to do two weeks to slow the curve. All of this. Well, we were shut down in this house for nine weeks. We were sitting there in our office watching Governor Ivy the day that she reopened restaurants and some other things and said nothing about the church. We was like, why, why didn't you say nothing about the church? We were so mad because we were ready to go that next Sunday. And then the reporter asked, what about religious services? She said, I have no reason why religious services should not be open. And I'm telling you right now, I shot a text out and said, you ain't got to come. You stay home if you want to. But those who want to come, the doors will be open Sunday. And we got right back in the first Sunday. Had a lot of pastors that waited another month, waited another six months. We went right back. Because we had learned our lesson. We was like, I know what's going on here. Happy Palm Sunday. I want you to think about something before I do preach the word to you today for just a few minutes. Before 2020, do we have any record of the church not gathering on Resurrection Sunday? Oh, I know there's all kinds of things that have happened. World wars. Epidemics, pandemics. There was just, there's been some horrible things that's happened over. But I'm gonna tell you something. I tried to find a history of a global church-wide no celebration of Resurrection Sunday that's ever happened in the history of the world, and it doesn't exist except for 2020. I'm talking about every nation shut down. The whole world. Now, of course, there were churches that didn't shut down. There were places that didn't shut down. But 99% did. And the enemy's just sitting there going, ah, ah, ah. without the resurrection, they can't stop me. Without the resurrection, if they don't have enough faith in their God, to have church during a virus that they that gospel that they preach about by his stripes you are healed they didn't even show up for easter resurrection nobody's waving palm branches this year where is their god that they say can conquer anything that's what that was about. That's what all of this was about. Stopping the triumphal entry of the Messiah. Stopping the stone is rolled away. Stopping. Nobody took communion either that year. Nobody remembered anything on Good Friday. Nobody gathered to celebrate it is finished. Most pastors during that time would have amended that statement. It is finished except when a global pandemic happens. And it's not quite finished yet. No, it's finished. I'm preaching to myself too. Remember, I'm a pastor up at church down for nine weeks. I'm not preaching about somebody else. I'm preaching about myself. Out of compassion, out of our heart for the people that we love. We did what we thought we were doing the right thing, but we didn't realize we were being played. But God. But God. How oh, are you thankful that God is consistent when every time the devil thinks he's done something, the God but God turns that thing around on that devil. Oh, let me tell you, the devil always overplays his hand. The devil don't know when to stop. And the devil pushed the remnant out of hiding when they started messing with their kids. Oh, my God. That's what Jenny was talking about. Listen, all this stuff has happened. But when they start messing with our kids, when they start telling us if Jesus Christ you need to stop going to church 
They pushed the remnant out of high. We've been tied up, bound up for too long. Now, for time purposes, just like in ESP when they're trying to show the replay of a game, for time purposes, some of the key plays have been extended to blah, 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 blah. I'm extending my message for time purposes. Excuse me, shortening, not extending. <laughs> and I'm going to give you the reference. And if they, can, if they can follow me, good luck. Luke chapter 19, verse 28 through 40. And it basically says that when it came time for Jesus to go in, how many of us he could have walked right in? Like he done many times before, but he was like, no, 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 no. This was different. I have to fulfill the prophecy. I have to ride the donkey in, the colt. Okay, all right, let's go get you. Let's, they, they, they always got some right here downtown. Let's go down to the, to the used colt dealership. I mean, you're only going to use it for one day. You don't need to buy a brand new one. They lose their value as soon as they come off the lot. We need to get one that's got a little bit of mileage on it. That's what a lot of folks will do. That's how, that's how I'm buying a car. I want one that's got a little bit of mileage on it. Depreciation's gone. Jesus said, no, 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 no. I want one. Ain't nobody ever even test drove. He made it very clear to his disciples, I have a colt waiting for me. It's a young colt, and no one has ever rode it before. Don't have no mileage on it. Here's the thing. It's tied up, and it's bound up by a rope. I need you to go down the street. You'll see a big oak tree there. Turn left at that. Go down a little bit, and you'll see, you'll see somebody that turn left there, and then right outside there is a post. It's in your Bible. Read your Bible. It says it's right in the middle of two roads where they interchange, intersect. There's a post in the middle of these two roads. It's in your Bible. You will find a colt tied to a post right there. Now, that colt did not tie itself there. The colt has an owner who tied him there. When you get there, just walk straight up to it and untie it and start walking away with it. Sounds like theft. Number one, the earth is the Lord's in the fullness thereof, so he can't steal from himself. But number two, that ain't what this is about. He made sure he covered that, and this is all in your Bible. I'm going to help you all read the Bible this week. If you don't believe me, you have to check it up. Check me up. The man that owns the coat is going to run out and scream at you. These are Larry's unauthorized translations, but this is what he said. What are you doing stealing my donkey? You look at him and you say these words. The Lord has need of him. Oh, I felt something just run through me. The law, because the law, why are you loosing it? Because the Lord has need of it. I'm telling you, if I've ever heard God in my life, I heard God speak to me this week. The, how, oh, the Bible says, how can they believe in what they have not heard? How can they hear without a preacher? How can the preacher preach unless he be sent? How many of those, what does the word gospel mean? Good news. How do they know the good news? The only reason anybody knows the good news is that we speak it, we deliver it, we carry it. 
The word of God is the good news. We are the ones that carry the gospel. But the church has been waiting on God to come to them when God has been waiting on the church to come to him. Oh, y'all ain't hearing me. And I'm telling you, that donkey represents more than just a fulfilled prophecy that Jesus had to ride one in. You got to look at the big picture. He was bound. He was born and raised. Let me tell you something. God, how awesome is this? God knew the donkey. Oh, my God. I feel the Holy Ghost. God knew the donkey. He knew the donkey. He knew where the donkey was. He knew the donkey was bound. He knew the donkey was in the middle of two roads. He knew that somebody was going to try to stop him. He knew that the, the rightful owners, the one that thought they had rights to them, was going to try to tell him, you ain't got no right. He's mine. I've got him. He's mine. I've bound him. And he will do what I tell him to do. That's what the, the government of this country and the government of every country in the world thinks they've done to the church. They have, they have strapped us. They have tied us. They have bound us. They have told us we can't get in the pulpit and talk about political issues. They've told us we can't get in the pulpit. But let me just say something to you. Every single thing you've ever heard about that is a lie from the pits of hell. There's not a single law that stops me from talking about a single thing in this pulpit. I will talk about what I want to talk about. They can put me in jail if they want to, but I'm going to tell you something. I have come to the kingdom for such a time as this, and so has this church. My God, God is about to cut the rope. God is about to set the church. Happy Palm Sunday. Y'all be like, Lord, let him be on his best behavior next week. And Judy says she's coming. See, it blesses me. Oh, man, I love the Word of God. And I love when I read things like this. My mind is just not like everybody else's mind. My mind starts thinking about Man, God, you knew that donkey. You knew exactly where he was, which means you knew God cares about creation. He cares about people. He cares. It's all his. Can I tell you something? That, that meant that when that donkey came out of his mama, donkey didn't know. Donkey mama didn't know. But God knew. This ain't just any donkey. This ain't just any coat. He's being trained. He's being programmed by his owner. I got to tie you right here because you're stubborn. You know what the, most, the number one most stubborn mammal in the world is? A donkey. Do you know what the second most stubborn mammal in the world is? A human being. Slap your neighbor and tell him you ain't nothing but a donkey. Slap another neighbor and say, thank God I didn't talk in King James. Some of you will get it later. You'll be eating lunch. You'll be like, what did he say? Oh! Why are you losing it? I have trained this donkey from the day it came in this world that it was going to pull a plow. It was going to, and if it didn't do right, I was going to spank its rear end and I was going to tell it what to do. Who do you think you are? The Lord has need of this stubborn mule. I'm so thankful that God didn't choose to ride in to introduce himself to the world as a Messiah on a beautiful stallion horse. 
Because everybody would have looked at him and said, of course he would, he would ride the system in. You know who rode the white stallions? You know who rode the, the fine horses? The religious elite, the governments, the Caesars, the Roman Empire. But he said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have somebody take me in that nobody else would ever expect, would ever take a king anywhere. I'm going to have somebody carry me that, that was bound up, tied up, programmed, stubborn. My God, people make fun of. My, are y'all hearing me? So when I realized why God told me to go back to four years ago this weekend, not the exact of oh, the calendar, but Palm Sunday, because, you know, it changes every year, but Palm Sunday Four years ago, he said, remember, remember. He cut the rope and said, I need him. I believe that COVID in 2020 when the true remnant church came out of that year of Palm Sunday and Easter, we came out with a determination that we've not had in a long time. We came out, if, if, if ever, we came out with an appreciation of the gathering. Do you understand that even those that are remnant, do you understand how much you have changed and I have changed? I mean, I'm not asking for a show, show of hands, but try to remember a few years ago how many times you would go in a restaurant and sit down and eat versus now it just feels so inconvenient. Everything. You have entire chains now that are building new stores that are drive through only. Because it's not that it, it was programmed in us that it's, you know, it's just not convenient for me like I thought it was. It's not that. It's always been about this, the gathering. It's always been about people gathering with people. Let me show you what I mean. Come here, Shane. Come here, Jerry. Come here, Bob. Y'all stand beside each other facing me this way. Go over and stand, turn, face me this way. Don't touch each other. All right? Watch this. Shane's like, if I knew you was coming, you wouldn't have got through. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that look on his face. He's like, oh, you better be glad. <laughs> now watch this. I want you legit now. now. Now I know you could like crush me, okay? I want you to really try to stop me, okay, from going through here. Don't do anything, Bob, just you. Really try to stop me from going through. You ready? All right, let's go. Did you really try? Did you really try? All right, give me 100%. Give me 100%. Give me 100%. Don't knock me out. Don't hit me. Okay, don't, baby, don't knock me out cold. That's all I'm saying. I mean, you're like, you want me to go Walker County? I go Walker County on you. <laughs> I don't want to miss. <laughs> I want you to legitimately try to stop me going through. Now, if you do, you do. Okay. All right? One, on count of three. One, two. <laughs> I still got it. I'm 56 years old. I didn't even try. <laughs> Just so you know. 
although I'm about to die right now. <laughs> One can chase a thousand. can block 10,000. Three can block 100,000. Four can block a million. That's kingdom math. I'm coming right in the middle of both of y'all. Let's see if you can stop me now. It's impossible. It's impossible. That's what they tried to stop. This is what the kingdom looked like four years ago. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Why wow, you breathe this so heavy? I saw you walk like it. I understand. I won't tell nobody. It's just between me and you. I'll probably be breathing heavy till the time I go home. Plus, I'm, I'm going to be rubbing some of that cream Sandy got from surgery on my legs, on my muscles. I'm coming home, baby. baby make me an ice pack, too. Now, watch this. I'm going to be straight up honest. I tried everything that was within me to get through the four, all four of them. It's useless. I don't care how strong I am. Four people, five people, six people. At some point, the strongest man in the world can't get through a group of people that is 10% as strong as that person is. But here's why they canceled us. I'm the devil again. I go anywhere I want. I do anything I want to do. I mess with this one's mind. I mess with this one's mind. I mess with this one's mind. I program this one. I program this one. Nothing's stopping me. So you used to had a pastor that was standing the gap for you. you. Used to, you had elders, you had a prayer team, huh? Program, program, program. All of a sudden, when you ain't got nobody to hook up with, when you ain't got nobody to hook arms with, and you get hit, you feel like there's no hope. You feel like it's over. But how many's ever gone through something, and you knew? I got a brother, I got a sister that I can call and share what I'm going through. They may not have the answer, but just knowing they're there, come on, it just helps you. Now, how many ever got up on a Sunday morning? Quit laughing at me. How many ever, because y'all still laughing at me because I can't still hardly breathe. So. You ever got up on a Sunday morning sick, depressed, feeling like a dark cloud's on you, whatever, and somehow you make yourself get to the house of God? So Y'all know where I'm going already, don't you? I'm talking about in the back of your mind, you're like, I'm going to tell you right now, the one thing I don't want to do today is go to that place. I don't want to see anybody. When you walk into the gathering, something shifts. I've been so sick, stand behind that curtain, that I literally had to hold on to something because I couldn't even stand up, I was so sick. Everything was in me saying, I, I just gotta give this microphone so I gotta go home and walk out while this praise team is singing. And there's a difference from one side of the curtain to the other. It's real. 
when I walk past the musicians and I walk past the singers and I walk into the front of the people, my whole situation begins to change. Because all of a sudden, I got somebody on my left and I got somebody on my right. Oh! See, we're the donkey. God said, there's something powerful here. And I'm closing. Do you understand? Every one of his disciples walked in with him. His followers that were there with him. Why was that not enough? Why was Peter, James, John? Why were the people, the human beings, not enough to just walk in with him? God said, I need to make sure that everybody knows no man made me. No man put me on their shoulders and carried me in. No man went before me and proclaimed that I am who I say I am. I'm going to pick the least likely candidate in the animal kingdom. And I didn't just pick him today. I picked him when his daddy met his mama. And they got married. He consummated that marriage. A little rascal, he had a few wives besides her, but still. It was supposed to be a joke, but it didn't go over too good. But She comes home one day and she's like, ee -haw, ee -haw, ee -haw, ee -haw, ee -haw. He's like, ee -haw, ee -haw, ee -haw. she's like, ee -haw, ee -haw, ee -haw. he's like, ee -haw. Ee -haw, ee -haw, ee -haw, ee -haw. Did y'all understand what I just said? How many of those, every one of you just understood every word I just said? You, just, you knew exactly what I just said, what the donkey said. And Jesus like, your time is coming. The world thinks you're tied up in bondage. And some people's bound. Some people's tied up in bondage. But some people, are being held in place so that they don't mess it up. Some people are being held back, and you don't know how to handle this, by God. Because if he let you go now, you would ruin it. See, the destiny of that donkey was to be free. But what if that destiny would have, what if that donkey would have got ahead of his destiny and asked somebody to cut his rope a week earlier? He was held for that moment. And can you imagine? I'm being silly and I'm being funny. But if the rocks can cry out, and that's where we get this story. They start praising him as he's riding that donkey in. They're waving palm branches. They're throwing their clothing before him, treating him like a king. And the religious people said, shh, this, is a, this should be respectful. You're being too loud. Like some of these churches I've been to, you sneeze. Everybody in the church turns around and look at you like you're going to hell. I can't, I can't go to some quiet church. I don't know about, maybe you do. Maybe, I'm not condemning quiet churches, but you'll probably tell I'm not quiet. And this ain't no quiet church. He said, if they don't praise me, the rocks cry. If that can happen, and if the Bible says all of creation groans for, for adoption, I'm 
not being silly and sacrilegious when I say this. My God understands donkeys. He understands the creation that he made. I'm not saying that plants are talking to God. I'm just saying that they're designed to wave in the wind. Everything is designed to give him praise. And if there was a way, and this is just, just, just maybe silliness in your mind, but if there was just a way to get in the mind of that donkey, what's going on, what's going on? Where are these people taking me? I don't understand. I don't understand. Stand here. What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? Some of y'all are scared to death. I'm about to make you a donkey. Where's, where's Mike? Is Mike Hendry in here? Mike remembers when I preached on this as a tent and in the tent, and I made him a donkey. He was such, a, he was amazing. But I'm not going to do that. Why is everybody taking their jackets off? Yeah, what's going on? so many coats laying on his back people started doing this making sure that that stubborn donkey didn't step on a mud hole walking on people's garments which was very symbolic the covering many of their co their coats some of them even took their mantles I know they were laid in before the one on the donkey, but it was the donkey that was walking on. What is happening? Why are they doing this? Who, who is that? Who is that? Now, God planned it all. He knew he was supposed to be on that donkey. Don't you know God had the ability to go over that donkey? Just climb up on that donkey. Sure he did. Do you know what he did? He stood there and he waited. Remember he said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men into me. Now we know he's talking about the cross. The Bible said he was lifted up. I had this thought in my mind that's going to ask a bunch of men to pick me up, but then I, then I changed my mind. No, I think I'm going to do it. I need some men that I can trust that won't break my back to come around, and I'm going to trust you. Pick me up and set me on the stage. I want to show you how it's not easy. It's all on you, Shane. Are you okay? There's no workman's comp. It wasn't an easy thing. What'd you say? Jeff said, she said no, I wasn't. <laughs> You're preaching truth now, Pastor. I wasn't talking about that, Jeff. I was talking about Jesus. Thanks a lot. Lifted him up, set him on that donkey. You know why they did that? Can I tell you why? The donkey became the mercy seat. Up until that moment, everyone had carried the glory on their shoulders on a piece of gold. But on that day, everything changed. Said, I don't need the religious to pick me up with a rod and a piece of gold. Just give me a donkey, but make sure you put me up higher than you. That's what Palm Sunday is all about. When the donkey took the place of the mercy seat. I just changed my sermon title. Father, I thank you that today begins the week that 
we remember that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whoever believes in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. Because of you, Jesus, and because of your words, it is finished on that cross. Because of the blood that you shed, no matter what sin we have committed, your blood is sufficient to cover it when we come to you through repentance and confession. So today, in this building, if there is anyone here that doesn't know beyond a shadow of a doubt that they are born again, that they are a child of God, let them choose this day to be the day that they know that. When they wave those palm branches today as they leave, they wave it as a child of God. If they're watching online, if you're watching online and you don't know Jesus Christ, receive him into your life right now. If you are here today on this Palm Sunday and you do not know without a doubt that you are born again, I'm going to take a few seconds for you and I'm going to ask you to come and stand with me. Last week, entire families were born again in this place. Will you join the family of God today? Do you not? Do you know? If you know, then you know. But if you don't know, you need to know. Because when you join the body of Christ, you hook up with your brothers and sisters. Your faithfulness and your obedience.